there's also these issues around just the, the, the plain issues of the day, like Obamacare. So Donald Trump is reminding voters about the upcoming increase in premiums. Listen to this, because he seems to be staying on message when it comes to the important issues that matter to the American people. Watch. Real change begins with immediately repealing and replacing Obamacare, a disaster. <laughs> premiums are surging. Companies are leaving, insurers are fleeing, doctors are quitting, and deductibles are going through the roof. I mean, you would think that that's what started the real turn for Hillary Clinton in terms of losing support, Ed, when you've got the news that Obamacare premiums are going to soar in 17, like Arizona, going to see premiums increase by 116% next year. What about this spike in Obamacare premiums? Does that, is that an effective tool for Trump to get the vote out? Well, I would hammer that like crazy. You don't, you don't need to really think about it in America because we're all getting the bills in the mail today. I can't believe how much my wife and my premium went up for health care. I can afford it. A lot of people can't. And it's tragic what's going on. My doctor has gone back to India. She said she can make more money there just practicing medicine that she can in the United States teaching in a medical school and having a general practice. That's mm -hmm. not good. And we're, we're just brutalizing the American family. Who could afford this? It just, it's insane what's going on. And I, I absolutely firmly believe that that's been the goal all along, was to get to a point where we have absolute total control over health care in this country, and we're going to have socialized medicine, and we're going to drive competition out so the quality of medicine is going to go down, the cost yeah. of drugs are going to go up, we're eliminated completely. Yeah, because as you've noted in the past, Dagan, it's not just about premiums going higher, it's about uh, less choice. Pre uh, pre premiums are going higher, your deductibles are higher, your, uh, your co-pays are higher. Right. Overall, your out-of-pocket costs are going up, and a lot of the plans, even for people in employer-sponsored plans, they are limiting the number of choice. They are going, they are like, you, you have fewer doctors to choose right, from. Right. And it, it is squeezing people, whether they're buying health insurance through Obamacare, yeah. or whether they're getting it from their employer, it is squeezing the American population in every way. Yeah, shape and that's form. impacting economic growth, broadly speaking. Throw on that minimum wage, Ed. You know a lot about this. Minimum wage increases are on the ballot in four states. Voters in Arizona, well, uh, Arizona, Car Colorado, Maine, and Washington will vote tomorrow to gradually hike the rate. That's an estimated 2 million people uh, being impacted by increases across these four states. If you're going to make it more expensive for business uh, because they have to pay more, you know, higher wages and more expensive for people because they've got to pay higher premiums, how does the economic growth story happen? Oh, and, you know, small businesses are what drive the economy and create the jobs in this country. You can't double the size of a monolithic giant corporation, but you can double the size of small businesses pretty quickly, double the jobs. But with these regulations, both state, county, and federal, that are being pushed onto these small businesses, health care costs, minimum wage, it's stifling growth everywhere you look. And I know so many people in the restaurant industry have said, I give up. I'm done. I'm getting out. I'm working for the federal government, the unions, and the local tax board. You can't do it anymore. So with all look at the, the number of restaurants. Look at the yeah. number of restaurants that are closing in New York right now in New York City because of this minimum wage business. So it's a fair question, business then, Anthony Scaramucci, about what happens to the economy in the four years should Hillary Clinton win the presidency. Oh, I mean, I'm going down to McDonald's right now to get some comfort food after this conversation. Okay, so Chick Fil A, I, I, think, I think, I think that, I think, but I think that's the point that Marie is making is that. This will continue, and then what happens is you get more people on governmental dependency, and then that is they vote with their pocketbook for the left, Maria. And that's the cycle that's taking place right now that Ed would like to see broken. And I, frankly, I think it's just really bad for the American people. So why are the, why are the markets rallying then, Ed? we got a rally of 200-plus points right now on, on the FBI news. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I, I am not... I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know why a lot of these things happen. The Anthony way they has, happen. Anthony well, has I just a, want to say a, a why thought the on this. Are rallying because at the end of the day, if she wins, you're going to have zero interest rate policies for as far as you can see. And so that's it's more of the same. That's good for asset prices and corporatists, and that's the reason why. Okay.
the marketplace certainty, uh, Ed Renzi. I don't know that businesses want the same certainty as, as what they've been dealing with, though, with Obamacare and the minimum wage story. Good to see you, sir. Thank you so much. Important uh, developments and important days that we are watching. Thank you, sir.